Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to a quick demonstration of Git commands. This is sort of like a little video cheat sheet for working with Git commands. I'm using the CodeAnywhere.com interface. I previously did another video showing you how to use uh, CodeAnywhere to create a website and publish it through GitHub pages. Um, this uh, works with the same source files, and so uh, you can work with any repo to do this. And um, just the goal here is to just review the basic git commands. So um, the first thing uh, when I come back to a project that I like to do is refresh myself with where I am. So uh, run a git status command. Uh, git status will give you um, a result. It will show you any changes that you have. So now it says I'm on the branch gh pages and my branch is up to date with my origin. Um, I can make a change. Um, and then uh, if I run git status again, it now shows me that I've modified index.html. If I wanted to add that to uh, my repository, that change is a change that I want to keep, then I can run git add index.html. And I've now added that file, so if I run a git status, I'll now see that that file name is turned green, and that is now in my staging area, so it will be included in my next commit. I can now commit this change with git commit, and I'm going to use the dash m flag and then send in a message in quotes. And I'm going to say updated index file. And now I can uh, push. So I can say git push. And it's telling me a bunch of stuff here. Um, I've not configured. Uh, my git uh, uh, installation on this development box um, to really, uh, you know, work in a very elegant way. But what you can see here is that in the end, it actually did exactly what I wanted to because um, that is the default behavior on these boxes. So it did push these changes to the GH pages branch. So now GitHub would be publishing those on the GH pages branch. Uh, that's pretty much how you would um, come back and do additional work. You should always save your work after you finish any work session or after you finish any major improvement to your project. And, um, and when you uh, commit and push your work, that's like doing an offsite backup. So once it's committed and pushed up to GitHub, whatever happens on code anywhere, if your development area um, goes all bonkers, then you can delete that whole development area and recreate it and you don't lose any work because you pushed all of your work up to GitHub. This is a very smart idea to keep synced up with GitHub and to keep your work there with GitHub. So I just want to show you, um, once again, uh, we run git status. We see that there's nothing changed here. We can come in, we'll add a paragraph. Um, let's do work. We'll save that. We come in here, we run git status. We now see that the index.html is changed. We add that to our staging area so that we can commit it. Git add index.html. Then we uh, run git status again, and we see that that's in the staging area. So now we can commit it. Added additional content to index.html. And we push, and we get the same big warning, but in the end, we see that it, in fact, pushed our changes to our repo. So um, that is how we can come back, do more work, and push more changes. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of other commands now just for moving within your repository. Remember that branches are individual um, ind and independent uh, uh, sets of files. So I'm going to switch my view here to say two columns, and I'm going to pull my index file over here. And as you remember, I had, um, I had changes. I added this, how are you, and I added this, let's do work. If I switch to my other branch, git checkout master, that's the other branch that I have, you'll notice that when I open this file again in the master branch, it does not have the additional changes. So you might be afraid at first because you might think, oh, no, that's horrible. I've lost all my changes. In fact, if I just check out the GH pages branch again and then come back over here and reopen this file, all my changes are back. 
So again, each branch is like a unique set of files, and that set of files is, um, you know, represents some state of your project. And so you can make a branch and do some experimentation. If it doesn't work out, you can get rid of that branch. If it works out, you can do what's called merging branches together. Um, and, uh, and you can do all sorts of other things managing your, your code and changes. So um, if I wanted to create a new branch, I could use uh, the dash B flag. So git checkout dash B test. And that makes a new branch based on the existing branch. So in my test branch now, I if I open this index.html file, I now have uh, all of the changes that I had in the GH pages branch. But if I check out my master branch again, you'll notice that I don't have those changes anymore. So that's... Um, it hasn't affected the master branch. The test branch is based on GH pages. And that's that's how that works. So um, let's see here if we can Yeah, if we refresh this file, then we can we can use this refresh button here to refresh the file when we switch between branches. So um, that's how uh, moving between branches works. You want to make sure that you're on the right branch and you can do that with the git status command. It tells you you are on branch GH pages. Once you've, for the purposes of the work that you're doing in the web development certificate program, once you've created the GH pages branch, it's okay to stay on the GH pages branch. Um, later on when we start creating JavaScript applications, we'll change how we work with the GH pages branch. But for now, um, that's just fine. I hope this uh, has been a helpful little cheat sheet of Git commands. Uh, please feel free to make a repo and do experimentation with working with Git and Code Anywhere. It's really important to get comfortable with, with the, uh, the usage of Git. And now that you have to use the command line, there's a little more of a learning curve to getting good at it. So keep that in mind. And uh, good luck playing with Git. Take care. Bye.